Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at should the Ravens re-sign Justin Matabike? Now, after a 13 and a half sack season, an all-pro, a great fourth season in the NFL, a big decision has to be made. Do you re-sign him, allocate those resources for interior defensive linemen, especially with the loss of Mike McDonald, who's credited with a lot of the defensive success? Or do you go on the limb? Pay them big bucks. You already have another big contract on defense with Roquan Smith, 20 mil a year. Do you have two 20 mil a year guys on defense? Do you allocate those funds somewhere else? Do you invest in young? Do you go in the draft? Do you look for free agency? Let's get into it. What we do with Justin Matter BK. Let's give some facts, some stats, and see how we should go forward with keeping Justin Matter BK, franchise tagging him, or signing him. Let's talk a little bit about how Justin Matter BK has came along. Uh, originally a third round pick out of Texas A&M. Came in the 2020 draft, so this is his fourth year. Uh, him, with him not being a first round pick, you know, those draft choices normally tend to hit free agency after their fourth year. So he's done with his fourth year. Um, didn't get an extension during the season. Not really sure why. They didn't talk about it much. And even today in the press conference, uh, Eric DeCosta was asked about it. He said he's learned that the best route or the best choice is just to not talk about it. He learned that through the Lamar negotiations, just to not talk about negotiations with other guys, and hopefully that's the best way they can get business done. Let's talk about Justin's stats here in Baltimore. As a rookie, one sack, two TFLs. Uh, second year, 2021, two sacks, seven TFLs. And I'm only gonna hit the important categories. 2022, five and a half sacks, eight TFLs. Now in his first three years, he had, what, eight sacks, uh, about 15, 16, 17 TFLs. Here comes his fourth year, the year right before you get paid, and his production went through the roof. He went from having eight sacks total, like in three years, he had 13 this year. I said 13 and a half earlier, it was 13. His quarterback hits went from 14, 15, from 16 total in three years to 33. TFLs jumped up to 12, where he only had seven, he had 17 in the first three years. His production this year went through the roof. He was a second team all pro and a pro bowler in this contract year. And if you want to bet on yourself and the year to improve your game, it's in the contract year. Guys are more motivated because uh, they need that bag. And I think Justin's gonna get the bag thrown at him one way or the other, whether it's from Baltimore, whether it's from another team. But let's kind of look at you know, his PFF grades and see if it warrants you know, what he's probably gonna command. Now, PFF is, P, people have a love-hate relationship with PFF. The grades are kind of wonky. The, they do have some good stuff on there. So PFF is not all a, 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 a gimmick, so to speak. They have some good stuff on there. And I kind of like the grades, but I like to see if the grades match up with the tape. So let's kind of, we know how Justin played, but let's see if his grades for the season match up. So on the season, and we just gave you his numbers for, his all four years, for all four of his years in Baltimore. Uh, as a rookie, he graded out as a 72. His second year, uh, which his production went up, he graded out as a 56 for the year. The next year, his production went up more, he graded out as a 63. Then this year, his total grade was a 75.1, which, which was crazy. Now, PFF has him for 14 sacks. I'm not sure, really sure where they found an extra sack at, but again, take those numbers for, for what it is. Uh, 17 quarterback hits, 33 hurries. Um, what I would say about that is you have to leverage his production versus the scheme. Now, if Mike had been coming back, maybe you can think about not bringing Matt BK back. Maybe. Because you can say, okay, Mike can scheme stuff up for other guys. But now with Zoe as the defense coordinator, and I'm not knocking Zoe, I just don't know what Zoe can do yet. I wasn't in the meeting rooms. I don't know how much of a defensive mind he I, just don't know. We don't have tape on Zoe calling defense to know that. We have tape of Zoe being extremely enthusiastic. And I, we have uh, different Twitter clips of players being excited that he's the new defensive coordinator. 
but we don't know if the scheme's going to get people sacks like it did this year. And some of it was straight up. Now, what I will say is about halfway through the season, I did a film study on this channel, and you can go find it. And I may link it up here in one of these corners. Uh, well, I thought Matt BK's sacks were a scheme. And I went back and looked at them. They were not. A lot of Matt BK's sacks were him beating guards one-on-one -on -one or splitting double teams. I, I was thinking a lot of his sacks came from those stunts when PQ would pick a guy and then he'd come off. Now, there were one or two in there, but most of his sacks were him just straight up beating guys. And that's why I think he's going to get the bag because his sacks were not just scheme sacks. But let's take a look at what some of the, the free agents that are out there on the market, just in case we do lead, lose Matter PK. So the biggest name interior D line free agent coming up, and I don't know if he's going to actually hit the free agent market, but his name is on this list. It's Chris Jones. He, he has a game in two weeks, so I don't think he's going to get out of Kansas City. So you just kind of forget about that. The next is DJ Reader. Uh, DJ Reader is a guy that I like from Cincinnati. Uh, he made 13 mil last year. Uh, I don't know if his production is going to warrant him getting a raise, but DJ Reader's okay, but I don't think he gets you the sack production that Matt BK got. I, DJ Reader's more of a run stuffing guy. And I think we got run stuffers in Travis Jones and Michael Pierce, so I don't think DJ Reader would fit uh, what we need in Baltimore. Um, Grover Stewart made 10 million from Indianapolis. I mean, I don't know much about Grover Stewart, so I ain't going to elaborate on it. Fletcher Cox, older guy. I think Fletch here would be like a one-year deal until we could get somebody else to fill that role. I don't I don't necessarily think Fletch would be like a long-term thing. Fletch would be like, hey, one year, give us what you got, see what we can do with it. Uh, Sheldon Rankins from Houston. I don't think Sheldon's going to get out of Houston. He made 9.75 last year. So really, if you don't, Resign Greenlaw. I mean, not Greenlaw. If you don't resign Matt BK, you're looking at anywhere from 15 to 20 mil for a good guy. Another name on here that I really like is Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins only made uh, three mil last year, right under four. He's, it's going to be a significant raise for him because he played an important role in Miami's defense. Um, Ken Law. Yeah. Thing is, you're gonna have to come out the pocket one way or the other. But do you want to come out the pocket for a new guy, or do you want to just stick with Matt BK? Because keep in mind, you gotta think about what they want to do with Queen too. And what I was hearing from the Costa, don't well, and it may be my Homer ears. I was thinking that he's still gonna try to find a way to get Queen too. That's that's what my antennas say from listening to the press conference that that don't count Queen not being a Raven next year. So, does the production of Matter BK match spending 20 mil for him? Because if Chris Jones made 19.5 and Matter BK had way more stats, well, not way more, way better stats than Chris Jones, and you know when it comes to contract, it's about stats. They don't look at tape. And we know, we know Chris Jones is a more effective, well, affects the game more than Matter BK. We all know that because we all football players, fans. But when you look at the tape and you look at the paper, the paper say on paper it says Matter BK has a better year than Chris Jones. So when they take that paper and they go to the negotiating table, they're gonna want more than that 19.5 that Chris Jones just got. So we're looking at a minimum of 20 million. Can we afford to have two, two, two 20 million guys on the defense in Baltimore? That's the question we have to ponder and think about. That's the 20 million dollar question, so to speak. So. Tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, should we re-sign Matt BK? Did the production match? Uh, well, will the production match having two 20 million guys on defense? Matter of fact, speaking of, we're gonna, we need to do this with Queen too. I'm gonna run this back with Queen also. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, this is just a thought piece, a, a think piece, so to speak. I was thinking about Matt BK and is it gonna be worth giving him 20 million and, and how important is it? And uh, losing Mike, his importance goes up a little higher to me. Um, I think losing Mike Queen's important goes up a little bit more important too, but that's another video for another day. So I appreciate you guys coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Like, comment, subscribe, and tell me if you think we should keep Justin Matter BK or let him walk. And a second question for you to put in the comments. If he is signed, What's the range? Is 20 mil too much? It's not enough. 
All right, now you can go. Peace.